There was a scripture that he pulled about the bewitching and the fear that they put on you guys. Right. In the bewitching, they instill fear in you. Because there's a video that he put where he asked his men to explain what is the hour of temptation. Y'all brother saw that? Okay. Where he was saying that the hour of temptation is when the microchip is being distributed. There's no scripture that says that in the entire Bible. When you look up the hour, anytime an hour is speaking in the scriptures of something to happen, what does it go into? Who knows? In one hour, it speaks about what? Destruction. Look up everything that speaks about an hour coming. We're in that hour when the destruction is going to happen. We're going to be in temptation, wondering if we're going to be taken or not, based on our righteousness when we were on this earth. But he got his men explaining, one by one, because he, he commands them all like zombies to do videos. And his explanation for that hour of temptation that Christ spoke about, where he said that he'll watch over us, is that, that you're going to be faced with the option of you got to take the chip. Shalom. In praises to Yahweh Bash, now with Shai Bash and Rakak Wadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh Bash, now with Shai Bash and Rakak Wadash, Thumb, to the 144,000 servants of Yahweh Bash, now with Shai and the remaining elect of the nation of Israel. Now, pretty much what I want to do here in this lesson is address a video that was sent to me the other day by um, the, the brother, the captain, Aishiar. He had sent us this in the chat, which is a video concerning the IUIC, in particular, Deacon Asaph, and pretty much Deacon Asaph was, you know, speaking about the hour of temptation, which... Lord willing, you know, I'll put up in post-production so you can see what he was talking about. But the IUIC in particular, Deacon Asaph, they're in grave um, error concerning the prophecy regarding the mark of the beast pursuant to Revelation 13 and 16 alongside their error concerning the hour of temptation pursuant to Revelation 3 verse 10. So um, pretty much that's what I want to address here in this lesson and you know give the elect of israel the true understanding of what the hour of temptation is and what the hour of destruction is concerning babylon the great america because like i said when you watch this video here entitled the microchip flee from the false prophets of israel in which the members or the heads of iuic you know, the likes of uh, Bishop Nathaniel, Deacon Asaph, so on and so forth. You know, these are the false prophets that our Lord, Yahweh Shai, warned us about, okay? Pursuing to Matthew 7, verse 16. And there's many other false prophets out there, you know, that you should be um, aware of. But in this particular uh, lesson, you know, I want to address the IUIC. And in particular, this individual that you see here on the screen, Deacon Asaph. Um, now, if you want to watch this video, you know, Lowell and I'll leave the link in the box below. You can also subscribe to the brother's page. That's GMS Upon Precepts 2. Right, that's Captain Aisha out there in the Carolinas. This is his second page because his first page or his main page currently right now is on strike. So, you know, press subscribe and get edified over there. Now, as it pertains to individuals like this, let's start in the book of Titus. And then we'll take it from there, Lord willing. <clears throat> and uh, this is actually not a book, but an epistle, a letter that was, you know, penned by the Apostle Paul um, to his understudy at the time, Titus. And this is pretty much what he said. This is Titus chapter 1 and we'll start at verse 10. It says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. The circumcision, in short, is pretty much referring to the Israelites that knew that they were Israelites back then, which were so-called Negroes, Judah, Benjamin and Levi, that were still dwelling in the land of Israel, in Judea and whatnot. And then you had the uncircumcision of our people, the Israelites that were scattered, you know, even back then, that were dispersed throughout the different uh, countries. They too were Israelites, 
But these were Israelites that, you know, fell away. Or as it's written, when you go to Jeremiah 17, verse 4, these were Israelites that had discontinued from our heritage. You know, the heritage beginning with the land. Because our people, you know, they were scattered even back then, going back to the curses. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And they were hid from their nationality. They didn't know who they were. A lot of our people were following the ways of the Greeks and the Romans. You know, they weren't keeping the laws of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And they certainly didn't know about our Lord, Yahweh Shai, you know, when he came. Hence the Apostle Paul making that statement. I have become the Apostle of the Gentiles because the uncircumcision, well, these were Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. And this is who the Apostle Paul was sent to, hence the, the, the books, right? Or I should say the epistles, right? You had the Apostle Paul writing letters to Israelites in Rome, which is where you get the book of Romans. You had the Apostle Paul writing letters to Israelites in Galatia, which is where you get the book of Galatians, so on and so forth, right? These were Israelites that were dwelling in Asia Minor, not knowing who they were, not knowing of Yahweh Shai and the gospel. And this is who the Apostle Paul was sent to, to bring back the Israelites that were uncircumcised in flesh and in their mind back to their true nationality and back to the truth. All right. That was the job of the Apostle Paul. OK, so the circumcision, like I said, is referring to those that actually knew that they were Israelites back then. And not only did they know, but they also boasted in knowing. They boasted in the law. You know, they boasted in keeping the laws which is quite reminiscent of the IUIC, all right? It's very reminiscent of Bishop Nathaniel and his cohorts. So, you know, everything is spiritual and I'll leave it at that, okay? So let's read it again. It says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy lucre's sake. And this scripture here pertains unto, you know, the likes of IUIC, Bishop Nathaniel, and his crew, okay? Because they're not only vain talkers, but what's coming out of their mouths is lies and deceit, okay? So it's very important that you Israelites, you know, are aware of characters like this, false prophets like this, and you stay clear of them because their teachings will lead to your destruction, okay? Now, um, I said we want to focus on the hour of temptation and the hour in which Babylon the Great America is going to be destroyed. So let's, let's start in, um, let me see, let's start with Revelation 18 and verse 1. And this was pretty much a vision that the Apostle John saw on the Isle of Patmos over 2,000 years ago concerning Babylon the Great, which is America, being destroyed within one hour, okay? So we'll start in verse 1 and we'll jump down to the point because I don't want to make this lesson too long. I just want to make it, you know, straight into the point. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And this is pretty much referring to our Lord and Saviour, Yahweh Shai, with the holy angels coming down from the heavens, meaning the skies, if you will, in what people out there call so-called UFOs, or what we know to be the chariots of our Lord, the spiritual vehicles that he's going to come back in. Okay, You can read more about that when you go to the book of Psalm 68, verse 17. It speaks about how our Lord's going to come back with a multitude of angels. Now, verse 2 says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hurtful bird. And pretty much this is um, the Apostle John seeing America completely and utterly wasted completely and utterly destroyed by way of the fire that's the nuclear fire the nuclear missiles that's going to destroy america in that time in that hour as we're going to read um during the time of world war three you know when world war three actually culminates to a nuclear war 
between, you know, Russia, America, China is going to be involved, Pakistan, India is going to be involved, North Korea is definitely going to be involved, Iran is most definitely going to be involved. You know, these different countries out there in the EU, they're also going to shoot their missiles upon Babylon, the great America. You can read about that in the book of Revelation 17, verse 16. You know, it speaks about how the ten horns shall hate the whore that sitteth upon the beast, which is referring to America's allies, i.e. the EU, the European Union countries. You know, they're going to shoot their nuclear missiles upon Babylon the Great in that day, okay, for one reason or another. Now, um, the, the habitation of devils, the, the cage of every unclean and hurtful bird, Again, this is the Apostle John seeing America destroyed. He's seeing it as a desert. And there's going to be, you know, a variety of unclean spirits, unclean birds that are going to be dwelling here in America. Or what was known as America. You can read about that when you go to the book of Isaiah, the 34th chapter. Okay. Now, let's jump down to the point. Because like I said, I don't want to make this lesson too long. Um... It says, Revelation 18, verse 9, And the kings of the earth, which is really referring to the different prime ministers, the different presidents, the different governors around the world, you know, in these different countries. It says, Who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, the herb referring to America, and they've committed fornication by pretty much following the ways of America, you know, being in bed with America's ways, her democracy, her philosophy, be it uh, homosexuality, be it freedom of religion, um, setting women over men, women's liberation, things of that nature. That's how these different countries have committed fornication with the whore, which is America. It says, shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Again, that smoke is going to come by way of those nuclear missiles and the fire that's going to come from the chariots, the, the spiritual vehicles that Allah is going to come in, the laser beams, all right, because they're going to play a major part in destroying America too. Verse 10, and here's the point, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, the great city, Babylon, which is speaking about America, great in wickedness, Babylon, going back to the Hebrew word Babel, which means confusion. And that's what you have over here in America. You have a cesspool of confusion. It says, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Okay, and this is where the likes of Deacon Asaph is getting mixed up. You know, concerning... What we're reading here and the hour of temptation because they're two different things. The vision that the Apostle John is seeing here concerning the destruction of Babylon the Great, America, this is literally going to happen within one hour. That's why it says, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Okay. And we know that because, as a matter of fact, when we go to... Um, I believe that's the book of John, um, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 10. Our Lord, Yahweh Shai, made a statement concerning the downfall of um, this Edomite. Okay, so it's not John, so bear with me here. Um, I beheld Satan. Okay, Luke. It was the book of Luke, chapter 10, and verse 18. Now, this is what our Lord, Yahweh Shai, said concerning Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, and his rulership being destroyed. Okay, the speed in which it's going to be destroyed in. This is Luke 10, verse 18. It says, And he said unto them, that them being, you know, our Lord's disciples, I beheld Satan, which is referring to Esau, Edom, the enemy, the wicked, pursuant to Malachi 1 verse 4. It says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. The heaven is referring to Esau's rulership. And right now these Edomites are in rulership 
And their main stronghold, their main place of rulership is where? Over here in Babylon, the great America. And it's literally going to go out as the speed of lightning. Okay, that's how fast America is going to go out. Literally within 60 minutes. Hence, what the Apostle John said in the vision. So let's go back to that in the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And what was that? Verse 10. But let's read from verse 9 again. It says, And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication, and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Yeah, because they're pretty much going to see the destruction of, you know, by way of the different news stations broadcasting the destruction of America during that time. Verse 10, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, which we know to be America, Babylon the Great, that mighty city, for in one hour, the key word being in one hour, okay? So this destruction that the Apostle John is seeing here, took place within one hour that's 60 minutes that's how fast america was destroyed and that's how fast esau was revoked or taken out of rulership by way of the nuclear missiles and the return of our lord and savior yahweh shai it took place within one hour it says for in one hour is thy judgment come now from there let's go to revelation 3 and verse 10 because this is where Deacon Asaph you know spoke erroneously now this is Revelation 3 verse 10 it says because thou hast kept the word of my patience I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation the hour of temptation and these are the words of our Lord you know a promise that Yahweh Bashma Shai is making with the elect in particular the 144,000 servants, you know, those that are serving our Lord by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, by us going out there on the highways and byways, out there on the street corners, teaching this word. This is really a message unto us. Lord willing, we be those men, okay? And Lord willing, we be a part of the elect, which the word patience means to suffer. And that's pretty much what the elect are doing, you know, trying to be upright in this wicked society trying to keep the law, statutes and commandments to the best of our ability, rehearsing the righteous acts. And like I said, us men, you know, those of us that's being called, we're going out there diligently. You know, I speak for us here at Great Millstone and like-minded righteous Israelite men. Those of you that are actually doing the work diligently, going out there on the highways and byways. Well, that's us suffering, all right? Suffering in the spirit. All the things that I mentioned, as well as, you know, brothers suffering physically in their body, ailments and things of that nature you know we're suffering our lord yahweh shai not being here with us we're suffering the kingdom not being here so it says because thou has kept the word of my patience which is this truth i also will keep thee from the hour of temptation okay so this is what our lord is going to do for the elect and this is a promise this is somewhat of an exchange because we've been doing the will of Yahweh Bashma Shai to the best of our ability, okay, diligently, in all faith and in all sincerity, well, guess what? When Esau fully brings about his new world order, which he's calling the fourth industrial revolution, the global reset, in the form of the implantable microchip, pursuant to Revelation 13 and 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, that mark being the implantable microchip, in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark. Well, guess what? Yahweh Bashma Shah is going to give the elect a special spirit in that time to resist taking that chip. Because we all know what's going to happen to those that's going to receive that chip. They're going to be destroyed, okay? during the time of World War III and by way of those nuclear missiles. That's the vision that the Apostle John saw in Revelation 14, 9 and 10. The destruction of Babylon the Great and different parts of the earth and those that took the chip being destroyed along with it. Okay, again, Revelation 14, 9 and 10 tells us that. 
Now it says here, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now this hour of temptation that our Lord is referring to here is completely different to the 60 minutes in which the Apostle John saw America being destroyed. This hour that our Lord is speaking about, he's saying an hour figuratively, okay? It's pretty much like a metaphor. And this is where the IUIC in particular, Deacon Asaph is confused, okay? And that's why it says this here. Let me get this real quick. Um, Proverbs chapter 4, and we'll go to verse 7. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Because it's one thing um, knowing the truth. It's another thing understanding the truth. It's one thing receiving a vision and it's another thing understanding the vision that you've received. Okay, and this is where the likes of the IOIC are in error. They don't have the understanding of these scriptures or of these prophecies. Okay, and this is why our Lord, Yahweh Bashma Shai said, when you go to Jeremiah 3 verse 15, he said, I will give you pastors according to mine heart that shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Because it's all about having the correct understanding of these scriptures. And this is where the apostles, the elders, and the men of Great Millstone come into the picture. Okay, because we're going to feed you with the correct understanding through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, in which that's what we're doing. Okay, now, Revelation 3, verse 10 says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Now, this hour of temptation is speaking about a period of time. It's not literally 60 minutes, all right? This is going to be a period of time whereby it's going to be impossible or damn near impossible to function in the society without having an implantable microchip. And that's what Esau is bringing, the implantable microchip. And that's going to be at the helm of his new world order, the fourth industrial revolution, the global reset that he's promoting right now. And that's the title of coming into, the key word being temptation, in which when you go into this word temptation, what does it mean? It means to be tried, to be tested. So this individual, Deacon Asaph, was way off when he said um, the hour of temptation is referring to when the destruction takes place and we're going to be in temptation wondering whether we're going to be delivered or not. That doesn't even make no sense, okay? The hour of temptation is speaking about, like I said, when Esau fully implements this new world order Okay, he sets up this cashless society and he pretty much makes mandatory the implantable microchip in order to function in the society. And the hour is referring to a period of time. It could be, let's say, from a month to two months, you know, but it's going to be a period of time where our, our faith is going to be tested. And that's what the word temptation means, to be tested, to be tried. Okay, and this is why our apostles, you know, teach us to go into words because if only Deacon Asaph and the likes of IOIC actually went into this word temptation, then they will get a better understanding of what this prophecy or what this vision is speaking about. Okay, so let's read it one more time and close out. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. So like I said, Yahweh Bashmah Ashai is pretty much going to give the elect of Israel um, the spirit to resist, you know, taking that implantable microchip, which is the mark of the beast, which is going to lead to their salvation. And those that don't have that spirit, that go ahead and take that chip, they're going to be destroyed in the hour, which is 60 minutes of destruction. Again, going back to Revelation 18 verse 10. You see, it says, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. And that's pretty much the understanding, okay? It's no uh, big breakdown or nothing like that. But as it's written, Proverbs 4 verse 7, wisdom is the principal thing, and with all that I get in, get understanding. 